<laughs> the Kraft Foods Company, makers of new parquet margarine, present Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you partially transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. There are lots of good reasons for serving Kraft's new parquet margarine. Parquet gives you everything you've ever wanted in a table spread. It looks wonderful, it tastes wonderful, and it spreads smoothly even when ice cold. Now there's still another reason for buying Kraft's new parquet regularly. With every pound, you can order a pair of famous Powers model nylon stockings at half price. I'll tell you more about Parquet Margarine's sensational offer in just a few minutes. Well, taking everything into consideration, the great Gildersleeve has done quite a good job raising a family, especially for a bachelor. Now he's on his way home, satisfied he's done a good day's work, and anxious to greet the last remaining member of his little brood. Leroy! Yeah, I wonder where that boy is. Leroy! He ain't home, Mr. Gilsleeve. Oh, hello, Bertie. Do you know where he is? Oh, yes, sir. He's in a jam session. Again? Yes, sir. The minute he got home from school, he grabbed his drumsticks, two of my pie tins, and headed for across the street. Uh, over at Bam's house, huh? Yes, sir, in a jam session. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I'll bet Leroy hasn't even done his chores. No, sir. He just grabbed his drumsticks to five ten and lit out for the jam session. Probably hasn't given one thought to his homework. No, sir. Just grabbed the drumsticks and the pie tins and lit out for the jam session. <laughs> He's apparently forgotten to come home for dinner. Well, Leroy says when you catch the beat, you forget everything. You're gone. <laughs> You're right, George. I'll have to do something to bring Leroy down to earth. He sure is in the clouds when he's with that little Miss Babs. Yeah, I know, Bertie. When she sits down at the piano and starts rattling them keys and fluttering them eyelids, that boy's gone. He's gone. I mean gone. <laughs> well, Bertie, I'm gone, too. You are? After Leroy. <laughs> Babs is a pretty little girl. But if I don't call a halt to this bebop business, first thing I know, Leroy will be wearing a beret and a goatee. It... Listen to that. You sounds like somebody threw a music box into a cement mixer. Well, I'll take care of this. Oh, for they can't even hear the doorbell. Leroy, break it up! Imagine the nephew of a man who sent his daughter to the Metropolitan Opera making noises like that. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, Babs. I take it Leroy's here. Uh huh. We're having a dreamy session. Come on in. Well, it's just about time for Leroy's session with the roast beef. Hi, Ug. Leroy, it's time for dinner. Man, how can I stop? I gotta keep moving. I gotta grow. Babs, do you think you should be doing that to such a good piano? Oh, you ought to hear Babs sing. Yeah, well, uh, some Come other time. Come on, Babs, take off with those crazy words. Yeah, but we're on. Boy, boy, is that the Chattanooga choo-choo? Yeah, Babs, you don't have to do Track 29. Boy, you can give me a shot. That's cool, man. Yeah, I can afford to board the Chattanooga choo-choo. I've got my fare. And just a trifle to spare. Yeah, well, that's very nice, but... You leave the Pennsylvania station about a quarter to four. Yeah. Read a magazine right. and then you're in Baltimore. Dinner in the diner, nothing could be finer than to have your ham and eggs in Carolina. When oh, you hear well. the whistle blow and eight to the bar, then you know the Tennessee is not very far. Shovel all the coal and got to keep it rolling. Woo, woo, Chattanooga, there you are. <laughs> Huh? Dig it? Oh, yeah, yes. <laughs> Very good, Babs. Thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. I've really worked hard to make good. Oh? 
I spend most of my time training for my career. Yeah, me too. Your careers? Mm-hmm. I'm going to be a singing star, and Leroy's going to be my drummer. Yeah, come on, Babs. i got to keep moving. Leroy! Okay. <laughs> and we have to go. Let's not forget our little duties and chores. There's the homework. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, that sounds so dull. Yeah, Uncle, we got our careers to think about. I'm going to be the best skin man in the business. Oh. <laughs> We're going to work up an act and take it on the road. Leroy, you're going to hit the road right now. But, uh, Young man, pick up your sticks and beat it across the street. Oh, for corn's sake. <laughs> I don't know what's gotten into Leroy. He took his drumsticks to bed with him. Beating time on the bedposts. Wish I'd known that's what it was before I got up in the middle of the night to see who was knocking on the door. <laughs> oh, well. It's the Babs influence. Say, Peavy has kites in the window. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this morning? Peavy, I see you've changed your window display. Well, the window's breaking up, so I took out the hot water bottles and put in kites. Now all you need to push sails is a big wind. <laughs> Care to volunteer, Mr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> oh, all right, Peavy. Leroy was in this morning for some adhesive tape. Adhesive tape? Seems he got a blister from twirling his drumsticks. <laughs> that boy. I have a little problem there, Peavy. You don't say. Babs has him spending... <laughs> Babs has him spending too much of his time in jam sessions. Leroy's even talking about going on the road, making it a career. My, my. Peavy, I don't like the idea of the boy ending up a grasshopper with a snare drum. Well, I doubt if a grasshopper could do what Leroy did here the other day. Oh? He lined up a row of water glasses and tapped out quite a tune. Reminded me of a fellow who used to come in the store and sit all day drinking cherry phosphates and playing the sweet potato. That was an ocarina, Petey. And that's what the squares call it. <laughs> yes, yes. He figured he was going to set the world on fire with that sweet potato. Oh, what's he doing now? I think he's digging them in Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't doubt it. I wish I could convince Leroy he's wasting his time. Yeah, Babs is a pretty little girl. Yeah, I know that. You'll have to admit she's a little flighty. Now, if I were Leroy, I'd pick some girl a little more serious-minded. <laughs> well, I would. You take little Clara Pettibone, for instance. She comes from a cultural-type family. Yes, she does. Mrs. Pettibone always has her picture on the society page. And Clara likes Leroy. She always sends him a valentine. And she invited him to her cello recital at the women's club last month. Leroy wouldn't go. No, I don't blame him. <laughs> <laughs> now, Phoebe, that's exactly what Leroy needs. Exposure to the finer things. As the twig is bent, so grows the tree. Yeah, you just have to be sure you're bending the twig in the right direction. <laughs> well, I know what's best for Leroy. By George, I'm going to maneuver it so Leroy spends more time with Clara Pettibone. Now, it's not too easy to pick someone else's friends for them. Well, once Leroy has had a chance to compare the two girls, I'm sure he'll choose wisely, the way I've always done. I've been pretty smart about picking my feminine companions. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. Gosh, Uncle, it was nice of you to pick me up after school. Happy to do it, my boy. Where are we going? Well, I have to run by Mrs. Pettibones to see about her water bill. Do I have to go? I'm supposed to meet Babs. Oh, uh, Babs can wait, Leroy. Come along. Do I have to go in? You want to sit out here alone and be unsociable? Yes, I do. <laughs> but Mrs. Pettibone hasn't seen you for a long time. She never sees me anyway. She has her nose so high in the air. <laughs> Leroy, out of the car. Okay, gosh. And brush the hair out of your eyes and shake the dust off your blue jeans. Just to watch you and Mrs. Pettibone haggle over a water bill? Who knows? You might see little Clara. Oh, for corn's sake. <laughs> Leroy, Clara is a very attractive young lady. Yeah, but she's such a king-size square. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy. Well, 
What's that? Who's moaning? <laughs> well, sounds like music to me. That's music? It's probably little Clara practicing one of the classics on her cello. I hate to ring the doorbell and interrupt that music. Ring it! Let's get this over with. <laughs> yeah, listen to that. Even Mrs. Pettibone's door chimes have class. <laughs> well, hello, Clara. Good afternoon, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, Leroy. Hi. <laughs> Won't you come in? Oh, thank you. Uh, but we can't stay long. No, we can't. I just wanted to see your mother about the water bill. But when you phoned, I told your mother wouldn't be home all afternoon. Oh, is that what you said? I guess I didn't get the message straight. Well, you're straight now. Let's go. <laughs> Does Leroy have to go? I was just practicing on my cello. Yeah, I have to go. <laughs> well, you don't have to rush off, my boy. You can stay a while. Why don't you, Leroy? Well, gosh, I, I got things to do at home. Yo, Leroy, what have you to do that's so important? Oh, I, I got to walk the dog, water the dog, feed the dog. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I don't think Leroy likes me, Mr. Gildersleeve. Why, well, of course he does. Don't you, Leroy? Sure. <laughs> But he never comes to my parties, and he didn't come to my recital. Oh, gosh. I don't think Leroy's very fond of the cello. No, it isn't that, Clara. Leroy's just a little shy. He has to be pushed. I think I'm being shoved. <laughs> if you'll stay a while, Leroy, we can play some records. Yeah? Who you got, Stan Kenton? No, but I have something very exciting by Stravinsky. Oh, brother. <laughs> Well, like I say, I've got to feed the dog, water the dog. Uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps we'd better go, Clara, and let you get back to your cello practice. But uh, why don't you come over and see Leroy Saturday afternoon? Saturday? Well, I... Wouldn't you like, Clara, to come over Saturday, Leroy? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Good. Then it's all set. I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I usually practice Saturday afternoon. Yeah? Too bad, Clara. Some other time, huh, Clara? No, wait a minute. Clara, why can't you come and bring your cello? I could do that. Oh, I've been free! <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will return in just a moment. Just a month ago, I first announced new Parquet Margarine's wonderful offer to send you Powers Model Nylon Stockings at half price. And believe me, things have been happening ever since. Women are really rushing in their orders, and the same women are reordering three or four additional pairs once they see what a remarkable value this is. Just imagine getting first quality Powers Model Nylon Stockings at half price. Only 75 cents a pair instead of $1.50. These beautiful nylons were designed by John Robert Powers to flatter the legs of America's most glamorous models. They're 51 gauge, 15 denier, and they have a flexible top and tapered heel for perfect fit. A famous testing laboratory reports these Powers model nylons are the equal in quality and durability to nylons selling regularly at $1.50. But you can order as many pairs as you want for only 75 cents and a yellow end flap from a package of Kraft's Parquet Margarine for each pair ordered. You have a choice of two popular shades and either a dark seam or a self-color seam. Complete instructions for ordering are given inside every package of Kraft's Parquet Margarine, the delicious new margarine that spreads smoothly even when ice cold. Tomorrow, be sure to get Parquet so that you can begin building your luxurious wardrobe of nylon stockings at half price. Well, when the great Gildersleeve comes up against a difficult situation, he usually finds a way to cope with it. When it seemed Leroy was wasting his time in bebop jam sessions with Babs, he decided to expose his nephew to a more dignified type of music and culture. What do you think of an uncle that'll put you in a spot like that, Bertie? You mean she's coming over here Saturday and bringing that cello? Yeah. I can invite her and I'll be stuck with her all afternoon. It isn't as bad as he makes it sound, Bertie. Little Clara is just like her mother. Yes, sir. And you know how she's respected. 
Everybody in town takes off his hat to Mrs. Pettibone. Made well, better or she'd knock it off with her parasol. <laughs> Leroy, you don't realize what a nice thing I'm doing for you. <laughs> What's this? Unc, you know you'd never spend an afternoon listening to some girl saw away on the cello. My boy, when I was growing up, I didn't have an opportunity. Some guys have all the luck. <laughs> and I've regretted it. My musical knowledge consists pretty much of singing with the Jolly Boys. Gosh, a whole afternoon with Clara. What do we talk about? Talk about symphonies. I don't know anything about symphonies. Well, if you run out of things to talk about, ask Clara to play the cello. I'll think of something to talk about. <laughs> Believe me, Leroy, you'll come out of this experience a much richer person. You mean you're going to pay me? No. <laughs> now, let's not discuss it any further. You just see that Clara has a pleasant afternoon. And if it'll make you feel any better, I'll sit around with you. Now, that's fair, isn't it, Bertie? Yes, sir. Mr. Gilsley, you sure have changed. You are, sis? <laughs> a while back, you were singing barbershop with the Jolly Boys. Now you go gone long hair. Yeah, maybe I have. Yes, sir. A while back, Mr. Gilsley was strictly barbershop. Now I've gone long hair. Yeah, all right, Bertie. Mr. Gilsley, you know where you go? Yes, Bertie. That's right. Instead of barbershop, you gone long hair. <laughs> Bertie, the parlor looks nice. Thank you, sir. Did you dust off the piano keys? I thought little Claire Pettibone played one of them big fiddles. A yeah, cello, Bertie. She might want to tune it with the piano. Yes, sir. And are all the little refreshments ready? Yes, sir. I have cocoa and ladyfinger sandwiches. Yeah, ladyfinger sandwiches sound just about right. I want to run this off like a regular musicale. Oh, yes, sir. I'm doing my best to make everything stuffy. <laughs> <laughs> no, Bertie. Hey, by the way, Clara's due any minute. Where's Leroy? I ain't seen him since he put on his blue suit. And he sure look blue. Well, blue or not, I'm glad he's dressed up. I want Clara to take home a nice impression to Mrs. Pettibone. Yes, sir. Where is that boy? Leroy! Leroy! Let me try. Leroy! Oh. <laughs> Bertie. If that didn't get him, he ain't here. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if that boy is taking his drumsticks over to Bab's house. No, his drumsticks are right here on the piano. Say, isn't that the Pettibone limousine pulling up in front of the house? Yes, sir. And look at that chauffeur. Ain't he so... Yeah. I wonder if he gets that big car on his night off. <laughs> Bertie, let's not speculate. No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> You go bring in the cello, will you, Bertie, while I put on my coat? Yes. Yeah. yeah, guess I'll have to entertain Clara until Leroy shows up. That boy. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Clara, come right in. Thank you. Why, you look very pretty this afternoon. Nice bow you have in your hair. Oh, Mother likes me to wear them. Well, Mother's no best, especially Mrs. Pettibone. <laughs> Where do you want the cello, Miss Teddy Bone? Well... Yeah, just put it over there by the piano, Bertie. Yes, sir. Come into the parlor, Clara. Thank you. Where's Leroy? Uh, Leroy doesn't seem to be around at the moment. Uh, shall we sit down and talk until he comes? Oh, I'm delighted to sit down and relax. I've been working with Grieg all morning. Oh, is he your cello professor? <laughs> oh, Grieg Sonata, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, him. <laughs> Very talented sonata man. <laughs> hey, where is that boy? He happens to be Mother's favorite, but I personally prefer Tchaikovsky. I think his symphony pathétique is divine. Oh, me too. He did a good job on symphony path On that one. <laughs> hey, Clara, I want to compliment you on your musical ability. It's quite an accomplishment, a young girl like you playing a big instrument like the cello. You're nice to say that, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I feel so inferior when I think of Wolfgang Mozart. You have. Don't we all? <laughs> Imagine composing at the age of four. Yeah, a few children are in school at that age. And can you imagine touring in clavichord recitals at seven? Well, old Mozart didn't let any grass grow under his feet. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to remind Leroy of Mozart. <laughs> he 
you would like it, my hands on that boy? <laughs> Tell me frankly, Mr. Gildersleeve, does Mozart's dissolve flirt do anything for you? For me? Uh, well, the way I feel about that, I... Excuse me. Bertie? Yes, sir? Have you seen anything of Leroy? No, sir, he showed. Don't worry about me, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm enjoying myself. Oh, so am I. I just hate for Leroy to miss this. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, tell me about yourself. I imagine you've had a simply fascinating musical background. Well, like you said, Mozart makes me feel like pretty small potatoes. Hey. <laughs> Why don't you play something on the cello? Here, I'll open the case for you. Oh, I suppose I may as well. Mother said I simply had to practice another two hours today. Well, now's a good time to do it. There. There you are. Thank you. Yes, uh, the cello's quite an instrument. Nice tone. This is an exercise Mother says I simply have to master. I hope you won't consider it dull. Oh, no. I wonder if I'm right in forcing this on Leroy. <laughs> Yes, Bertie. Can I see you? Yeah, go right ahead, Clara, while I see what Bertie wants. Yes, Bertie. You ready for the lady fingers? Oh, oh not yet, Bertie. Okay, it's all you in trouble. Just trying to help you out. Yeah, just, just a minute, Bertie. Yes, sir. You go listen to the cello. Me? I'm going out and find Leroy. Now, why didn't I stay in that kitchen? <laughs> had to get out of the house. And I don't blame Leroy too much for not showing up. But I've got to find him. He wasn't at Babs' place. Yeah, I'll try Peavy's. Hello, Peavy. Oh, I can get his name. Peavy, have you seen anything of Leroy this afternoon? Yes, he was in here just a little while ago. He was? Which way did he go? He went that way. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Peavy, this is important. Did he say where he was going? No, he and Babs had their faces stuck in a soda. Oh, so Babs is with him. Peavy, he's supposed to be home this afternoon. Little Clara Pettibone came over and brought her cello. You don't care. Well, you really shouldn't do a thing like this. How can I explain this to Mrs. Pettibone? She'll be offended. Yes, I suspect she will. And that poor Clara. She'll be embarrassed having Leroy ignore her and go off with some other girl. And I've got to find that boy. Yes, you can't help feeling sorry for Clara. Yeah, she seems to have nothing in common with children her own age. And she's too intelligent to talk to adults. <laughs> okay, excuse me while I answer the phone. Yeah, go ahead. I have to be on my way anyway. Phoebe Tramacy. Yes? Oh, just a minute. Mr. Gildersleeve. You yeah, what? It's for you, Bertie. Oh? Yes, Bertie? Mr. Gildersleeve, Leroy's home. Well, fine. I'm not so sure. Babs is with him. Uh-oh. She's at the piano, and Leroy's got his drumsticks using Miss Pettibone's cello for a snare drum. Zip. <laughs> What's Clara doing? She ain't fainted yet, but I'm standing by. <laughs> well, hold the fort, Bertie. I'll be right home. <laughs> Confound it. I invite Clara over, and Leroy and Babs start a jam session. Who's adding insult to injury? When Clara tells her mother about this, Mrs. Pettibone will have me run out of town. Oh, just listen to that. Sounds like a bunch of Indians on the warpath. Well, I'll put a stop to this. Is that you, Miss Gildersleeve? Yes, Bertie, I'll take charge now. <laughs> that Miss Clara's already taking charge. What? Come on in and watch that girl slap that cello. Uh, slap the cello? That's cool, Clara. Now take the break. Yeah, go home. Hey, not bad. No, sir. Hey, what are you doing? Uh, Clara, well, what's going on? Join in, Mr. Gildersleeve. We're blowing up a storm. Uh, no, no, you go right ahead. Bertie, 
It's not the kind of storm I thought it was going to be. No, sir. They're all getting along fine. Yeah. <laughs> what a crazy way to make friends. The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Next time you're shopping, pick up a pound of Kraft's new parquet margarine. On the package, you'll see a truly remarkable offer. A chance to get famous Powers model nylon stockings at half price. They're 51 gauge, 15 denier nylons, and guaranteed first quality. And you can get them for just 75 cents with a yellow end flap from a parquet package. Get parquet tomorrow. Kraft's delicious new margarine that spreads smoothly even when ice cold. Mr. Gilsey, that was a fine musical. Yes, Bertie, the kids had a good time. And Leroy didn't seem to mind at all getting back to his homework. Yes, sir, after they blew up that storm, I guess they were ready for a little calm weather. Well, I'm not going to worry anymore about Leroy. Yeah, I think I'll let him sit up tomorrow night and listen to the Academy Awards broadcast on NBC. Yes, sir. Didn't that little Clara Pettibone have fun today? Yeah, Clara had the time of her life. But I wonder how her mother took it. Mrs. Pettibone's been very careful about Clara's musical education. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think I'll phone and see if I can smooth out the situation. Yes, sir. Yeah, I really should apologize to Mrs. Pettibone anyway, because it happened at my house. Yeah, I'll bet that old biddy has read the riot act to poor little Clara. Uh, Clara, this is Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, yes, Mr. Gildersleeve. Is is that your cello I hear? Yes, it is. Well, how can you answer the phone and play boogie on the cello at the same time? Oh, that's Mother. Hey. <laughs> Mrs. Pettibone slapping the cello? I just taught her how. She thinks it's real fab. Uh, oh, my goodness. Good night, folks. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Barbara Whiting, Ann Whitfield, and Dick LeGrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Good cooks know that the fresher the salad oil, the smoother the French dressing. The fresher the cooking oil, the better the cake. And now Kraft Oil is guaranteed to reach your kitchen as wonderfully fresh as it was the minute it was bottled. That's because Kraft Oil, and only Kraft Oil, is sealed with an airtight vacuum cap. Get Kraft Oil tomorrow with confidence that it's the freshest oil you can buy. Tonight, play You Bet Your Life on NBC.